Hey, what's up everybody? Jesse here with Southern Reels Fishing for an on the water review of my Minn Kota experience, I should call it in general, with their trolling motors. I've had this boat about three and a half years now. When I first bought the boat, it came from the factory with a Minn Kota Ultera, 80 pound thrust, 24 volt, with the 60 inch shaft, I believe it was. I kind of expressed concerns when I first got it about the shaft being long enough. I was assured it was fine got out in the water and realized very quickly that if you get in any head waves at all it was pulling the trolling motor out of the water so i only had that one probably about a month and a half two months into the summer took it off sold it and i bought a 112 pound thrust 72 inch shaft uh, 36 volt Ultera. Uh, unfortunately not too long after having it actually my first trip out with that motor I learned very quickly that you can't trust spot lock when you're close to a bridge. I'll show you real quick what happened. Oh, that's bad. That sucks. Well, yeah, as you see, that was brutal. <laughs> that was my fault for not being experienced and knowing what you should and shouldn't do with your trolling motor. I ended up paying to fix that motor myself, which was basically a busted trim housing. Everything else was fine on the motor. So we proceed forward from there. I got the replacement trim housing, put it on, and that's $400 mistake. Started fishing through the summer and made it to early fall. And the second trim housing, the replacement one, started getting really rough making noise a couple weeks later it pretty much locked up was done so i had to warranty my first trim housing basically the power trim that powers the motor up and down I put the second one on that made it into early spring and it seized up ended up on a third one that one made it a little bit longer evidently they made some improvements to it unfortunately that summer which was my second summer with the boat we were out in the river with my wife and the control board fried on it. The motor just started cutting off on, it own, on its own and it was done. So I had to replace the control board. So at that point I was three trim housings in, one which was my fault, and a control board. Got that fixed, got back on the water. Uh, not long after that into the fall once again the fourth trim housing had to be replaced <laughs> i'm just like oh my god this is ridiculous and each time this happens it took time to get the replacement parts i got that replaced and that made it i didn't use my boot much that last winter and then last summer i took it out and was offshore with some friends was relying on having the spot lock so we could do some shipwreck fishing offshore and the second motherboard failed while we were about 25 miles offshore. The motor wouldn't even store itself or stow itself. I had to manually stow it. So at that point, I was pretty much done with the Altera. Four trim housings, two motherboards or control boards fried on it. Now I have to say, Minn Kota's customer service was phenomenal. They were super nice. They, no questions asked. They backed up their product. The only issue was a lot of times the parts that I needed to fix it were on back order. So I kind of complained to them. I was like, look, you know, this is ridiculous. They looked at the repair history. They're like, yeah, it's definitely a little much. So they agreed, which was awesome, to trade me out that used Ultera for a brand new Tarova, which is the next step down. It's the one that I have on the front I'm doing its thing right now. The only, the only difference between the two is that's a manual stow to where the Altera, you know, stows itself and powers itself up and down, uh, which is a lot of the problem with that is the fact that the belt is running up that shaft that's going through that trim housing it introduces salt water in there constantly. I don't care how well you seal it, you know, corrosion is going to get in there. Not to mention the strain on the electronics of it having to power itself up and down, circuitry and all. That's a lot of amperage that's pulling to be able to do that. And that entire control board is sealed in gel to make it waterproof. So it really doesn't have a way of cooling itself. I can definitely see that being an issue. Props to Minn Kota. They stood behind their product. They got me this motor. Unfortunately, it was on back order. And that's why I did so much kayak fishing that summer. It's because the boat was sort of out of commission. Honestly, this boat without a trolling motor to me is not difficult to fish with. Anyway, eventually the trolling motor came in and I actually liked the Tarova better because for one, I can get it in and out of the water quicker. 
I like the fact that it's not locked in position. So I noticed on the Altera, when you've got it trimmed wherever you want it, it's locked in position. So if it were to hit the bottom, like if a big swell came in and your boat bottomed out on a sandbar, it, it can't give to where this, all it would do, it would just lift up, you know, because it's not locked in position. And the same if for the height adjustment, say if you were under something and it came up and hit something, if you had that knob set loose enough, it would actually just push the motor down instead of destroying it. <laughs> So in a way, I kind of like the Tarova better. It's a smaller unit. It's way quieter, way quieter than that Ultera ever was as far as the steering. I mean, a lot of times you don't even hear it. So I've had zero problems with this unit and I have used it extensively, especially since I've started charter fishing. I'm out here every other day now with it. Used it all summer, no issues whatsoever. So props to the Minn Kota for standing behind their product. I don't recommend the Ultera if you fish a lot in salt water. They say they have the issues worked out. I, I wouldn't trust it. The added convenience of it powering itself up and down is nice. It's, it's not necessary. It's so easy to walk up here and just throw this in the water and get right to fishing. It's actually faster. And my two cents worth is if you fish a lot and you want to be in the salt water a lot, I would recommend just getting an Altera with the manual stow feature. It's still got all the bells and whistles that otherwise. Watch it around bridges. Spot lock works exceptionally well as long as it has enough satellites locked. But when you get up around structure, especially bridges or under bridges, it struggles. You know, it doesn't know where it's at because it's not got a full lock on enough satellites. And it has run me into the bridge before because it's not sure where it was. I think a nice feature moving forward, Minn Kota, if you watch this, would be for them to integrate sensors like you have in vehicles now that track objects to have like collision avoidance built into it. So if it sees that it's getting ready to run into something, it'll stop. That seems like that would be an easy feature to add and actually to even take it one step farther if they had like sensors that you could put on either side of your boat to work in conjunction with the GPS lock. Say if you were beside a set of pylons, it could sense that those pylons were there and use that in conjunction with the GPS information to lock the boat in place much better. I mean, it seems like it would be a fairly easy thing to do. I don't know, I'm not a software engineer. Uh, there you go, Minn Kota. that's something for you to work on. <laughs> I do recommend if you get one, go overkill on the thrust that you need, especially, I mean, this is a 24 foot Key West Bay boat. The 112 has plenty of power for it. It'll hold it even in the worst currents here in the Chesapeake Bay. Go longer on the shaft, a 72 inch shaft is sufficient for this boat even in the worst conditions. It'll hold this boat and another boat tied off to me no problem in spotlight position. So it's a, it's a really good motor. The Tarova has been awesome. The Ultera, it's a nice thought. I just don't think it's very well executed. Uh, I would avoid it personally. So that's my thoughts on the uh, Minn Kota trolling motor. Uh, props to Minn Kota once again for standing behind their product and if you have any questions, just hit me up in the comments below. I'll be glad to help you out if I can. Otherwise, I'm going to go do some fishing. Peace out. See you in the next video.